Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week I'm putting a foot switch on the katsu. See you in a minute. Now this isn't just for the Katsu router, it's any palm router, small handheld router that hasn't got a plunge base on it. Uh, and there is a good reason for this and it's all down to safety really. Let's just have a look at a couple of the routers I've got and why I think it's necessary to put a switch on the Katsu that I can operate with my now this is the big beast in the family, this is the Makita 3612C, I bought it probably about 10 years or more ago now, I've used it about twice I think, partly because I'm scared stiff by it, it is an absolute beast of a thing. But it's got a plunge base on it, so if you're going to do any hand routing, first of all it means you've got both hands securely on the side grips. And you're not going to do any harm when you turn it on because it's not going anywhere. The switch is on the handle so you can operate it without moving anything else. It's got a safety lock on it. And you can then just go and plunge and then start and do whatever it is you want to be doing with the router. So far so good. Apart from adjusting the speed. Now, if you haven't got a plunge base for the Katsu or the Aldi work zone routers and you're doing some hand routing like that, you've got the thing set to the depth you want to set to route to, which means that you can't put it on the work piece like you can with the big router. So you've got to hold it off the deck, which is fine. And then you've got to switch it on while you're holding it, which is fine. But then you've got to get your hands onto these two handles. And whatever you do, whichever way you do it, you end up with only one of your hands holding the router. And you also end up with having to control that router when it's going in and coming out. And again, coming out, you've got the thing lifting up and then you're taking your hand off. And again, there's a chance that at that point you're going to slip, the router will dig in, something will catch. And you either end up with a mark in your work piece or a damage to the work you've already done. Or worse than that, you end up doing something stupid with it. So I'm not a great fan of having to do this sort of thing with the router. So my view is that if you can set this thing up to the speed you want, turn it on and then just control it with both hands, switch it on with your foot and it will just gradually go into the workpiece. You can work, you can then take your foot off the foot switch till it stops, safe and then you can lift it off. It's a really simple alteration to do it, it doesn't need a great deal of pieces. In theory you could just put a foot switch into the circuit. I'm <laughs> as usual going to make it slightly more complicated than that but not much. I've got um, a box, a bit of cable, a twin outlet socket and essentially what I'm going to do is put the switch just in front of the socket which will be the other way around. So the wires go out that way on a piece of wood and then you'll have a, an extension lead on that. Simple job, to me it's worth not having that problem with having to lift your work in and out with one hand. There are two sockets on there, you actually only need one for the router obviously, but there is coming up in the future another alteration for the katsu that I'm doing that requires me to have another power source as well. So I'm taking the advantage to sort of future proof it for that. 
So that's the task for the day. It's a very small task. Let's just get on and uh, work it all through. Now I've cut a piece of MDF down to the size I want. It's just a scrap. I'm going to put some um, soft cushion foam on the back so it didn't matter that it was bad on the back. Um, it's the size of the outlet there for the box that'll be screwed on and the foot pedal will fit on that part of it and feed into the box. I've drilled, I've taken out the screws that attach the plate to the bottom of this foot switch uh, and I've just drilled them out slightly so they'll take a, a threaded bolt and then I can screw those in from underneath, uh, drill two holes for those, recess the heads in a bit and then that will hold that foot plate down. Um, I realised afterwards that perhaps the easiest option instead of this would have been to have got a two pin socket outlet with the lead already on it. Um, the reason for that is that I've had to drill a hole in the case here which the white cable will run through um, but that in itself is going to be an area where in theory that could wear as the cable is through it it, it, it could pull and drag around it and cut into the chafe the cable if I'm not careful what I will do is put a lot of uh, dry, uh, hot glue on the inside of it to, to locate it and the cable clamp to stop it pulling out but ideally it would have had a, a proper sleeve on it that will uh, protect the cable from any damage it's not going to be used a great deal so I'm quite happy with it but it's uh, it could have been improved by just buying a double socket outlet and a plug on it and then just tapping into that so we'll screw the box on now and then we can start and wire it up Now the wiring is fairly simple, it's the usual uh, caveat I would give if you're not comfortable in wiring a plug or doing this sort of thing, don't do it. Uh, but it is fairly straightforward. We have the normal three wires coming in from the mains electricity. The brown live or line, the blue neutral and the green and white, uh, green and yellow earth wire. Uh, now normally they would just go straight into the back of the socket. There are three wires from the switch. The reason there are three is that it's got two operations. It's either connected up as it is now and when you depress the pedal it breaks the circuit or it's normally not working and when you press the pedal it makes the circuit. The white wire is common to both. The black one is the one we don't need because that is the one that is actually live when it's work when it's not doing anything and we don't want that. So we're going to cut the black wire off that will leave us with the two wires and all we're doing is interrupting the live supply. So we take the brown wire, which is the live power coming in, we'll need to join it to one of the wires, which is the red wire there. I'll use a joiner for that, put that in there. And then the white one then becomes the live wire once the pedal's depressed. So that will go into the live on the socket. It's pretty much as simple as that. Just wire those up now. black. The switch itself is rated 10 amps so there should be plenty of capacity there for a normal 
router there's one or two other areas I, th I can see that this might be useful um, but most tools nowadays have got these NVT switches on so it probably wouldn't work with anything like that um, if you've got a scroll saw or something like that without an NVT switch on it this would be useful again because you have to take your hands off something that's moving before you actually um, get to switch it off so effectively then we've taken the live wire routed it through the switch and then connected it directly into the socket That's there's um, a tag on the uh, wire tie on the end of the cable going out just going to secure it with a bit of hot glue as well it's not ideal as I say I ideally it should have a proper um, outlet but it won't be getting a lot of use I'll just have to keep an eye on it to make sure pile that with glue and then I've just tacked the um, jointing block in as well and I'll just cover the screw heads over with that as well so that everything's totally insulated in there put a plug on it that's now ready to go with that so all it needed to do now is to pop the cover back on and we're ready to give it a try uh, there's a couple of other things I've thought of since that m I may well use it for. Um, angle grinders in particular have got horrible on-off switches on them that are quite difficult to get hold of and switch on and off, particularly if you've got thick gloves on, um, if you're cutting steel or anything with sparks flying around. Um, so I might well use it as a trigger for the on-off on the angle grinder. Similarly with the bench grinder as well, um, it's very easy to turn them on and do what you're doing and leave them running. So again, it's like almost like a dead man's switch this, that once you walk away from whatever you're doing, it will kill it at the time. Just discovered another advantage in that... Um, the router was actually switched on as well when I plugged it in. Something I'd forgotten to check and didn't check in the normal course of events that would have then just started quite happily and done whatever damage it was going to do. But now it, it's got a, a, an added safety feature effectively that it's only when I've got it in place, both hands on it, in control. keep the thing firmly held until the last minute till it's fully stopped and move away I'm pleased with that the other thing is now that when I'm not using it uh, it'll just push out of the way underneath the workbench easily accessible but it's out of the way so I won't trip over it when I'm not using it well that's the Katsu foot switch sorted this week uh, next week we'll probably be moving on with a few more bits I've got to uh, to do with the Katsu. A few more improvements or attempted improvements. Look forward to seeing you then. Bye.